<laughs> Hello, my name is Chitta and I am one of Bhante's students. We realized recently that if people wanted to make donations to Bhante, it wasn't necessarily very easy. It doesn't have a fixed address and therefore a fixed donation box. So we've added a link below if anybody does feel like they want to offer some dana in any way. Um, obviously it's gone to a wonderful cause, it's supporting the sasana and helping support the translation of all the suttas and the recitation of the suttas. So if you feel that way inclined, then please do click on the link below and support. It's wonderful, Monk. Thank you. May you be well. Difficult times are the perfect indicators of the very fiber of character the person is deep down, what they believe in, what they're animated by, what moves them, who they to truly are. That's why a battlefield, either physical, actual battlefield, or a metaphorical one, could be some type of psychological warfare, such as a person who's going through some ordeals um, in, you know, dealing with one's own fearful, um, threatening, worrisome thoughts, for example, or um, limiting beliefs that one holds. And... Uh, and um, the way that uh, one struggles in life, um, those can become a battlefield, of course. Living through life's struggles, that's another battlefield. Making ends meet, seeing unfair treatment of oneself by others, by supervisors, by one's mate, um, etc., and not losing it, not losing your cool, as they say, not, not uh, being uh, taken by the circumstances you're in. That's also a battlefield. All these are tests. In reality, to help you develop if you want to develop, that is. Unfortunately, many of us um, have um, a thin layer of such um, lofty, presentable um, images that we have constructed for ourselves, for society, for those around us to see us fooling ourselves in many cases. One of the best ways to see if you are who you say you are, you hold to the truths that you say you do, is to be in such a battlefield. To be in difficult situations. Difficult where compared to you know, kicking back and having things be, you know, going your way. That's what, um, you know, entropy is. When you're going, going from a state of orderliness to disorderliness, no life can come out of it. No goodness could come out of things going easy, being easy. Development happens when there is some stressful situations. This is something we learn, again, from biology. Life happens through difficulty. Growth, that is. Life, that's what I mean. Look at a plant. Look at a tree. Before it turns into a tree, what is it? It was a tiny little green leaf pushing itself out, out of solid rock in some cases. 
So many are stuck under the ground, though. We don't see them. <laughs> we see those that have made it through. And human beings are no different. The battlefield uh, of um, situations, circumstances that create or are full of strife will clearly show the very fiber of one's being, who you are as a person, as a character. What we have in the world today, in the world of influencers and things, uh, where people have, you know, podcasts, this, that, uh, many in many cases they have so many followers. Uh, the actor is a perfect example. During the last uh, three years or so, where the world has been going through these terrible, terrible states, uh, people were thrown into the unknown, people were being fired because they didn't want to just blindly comply because everyone else was following you know, different types of mandates that they kept throwing in our direction. Some people were saying, excuse me, I don't agree with this. You're taking away my right. It doesn't make sense. It, it's not logical at all. Simply to give you the semblance of confidence or uh, lack in fear, you're imposing these things upon me. This is my right. This is my health. Leave me alone. I'm not doing anything to you. So that fascistic, um, uh, Maoist uh, uh, way of enforcing uh, arbitrary rules that they kept on coming up with upon others, they didn't need police. Because the common person was doing that. And on top of them, obviously, those so-called influencers, those well-known, famous individuals who um, were carrying themselves as the, um, you know, the crusaders of justice or, or, or the knights in shining you know, armor and coming to hold values like Western civilization. Uh, there's one who was very famous, without naming names, uh, protector of Western values, things like that. And then they go and they're like the first in line to get to follow the rules and mandates. And then a few months later, completely disappointed that they did that. And then they reveal, by the way, that they've done that. And so many followers just drop um, from being influenced by such characters. And then you pass, you know, fast forward and you have two, three years pass and, or two years pass. And now we have these things that are happening where the world is being pushed. Uh, there's this constant presence or threat of war. And this time it's a third world war. Uh, and, and they've normalized it so much through Hollywood movies. They've normalized it in such ways where um, they, uh, it's like people aren't shocked by the mentioning of it. It's, it's, it's almost, it almost has this so what attitude. And then you see individuals whom you respected, the common person, you know, because you're in the sphere of influence of these individuals because you see them on the news, you see them on your Facebook feed, Twitter feed, whatever feed there is that you're part of, you keep hearing about them. You see them in their books or in their podcasts and then they're blasting away. And then you see them shift their positions on values. And this is what I mean by the battlefield that we're in right now. Courage shines in the battlefield. It shows also the cowards among us as well. And many of these influences are 
who switch sides, and all of a sudden the integrity, uh, the compassion that they've been talking about, or high values, you know, one of them I, I was mentioning, you know, Western values and then Christian values and this values and compassion, 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 and all of a sudden the events of war and this and that, suddenly they are cheering on the blasting of entire region in the Middle East or anywhere in the world. Why? Because, well, the, the, that's the popular side. That's the one side that, that gets all the attention, the one that's perpetrating such violence. And all of a sudden, these influencers who have been so vocal about compassion and yes, which is yes, it's all about love, it's all about love. They say, well, you know, we should give them hell. What? Where, where is uh, empathy? What is that love of yours that you're talking about? Because obviously the, what you're talking about, love or compassion, um, sees color, sees uh, races, sees political views. Hence, your change in position all of a sudden. That's not love. Because love does not see color, does not see borders, does not see races, does not see religions. Compassion is compassion. It's unchanging. It is non-political. It's definitely beyond uh, popularity or wanting to be popular or being an influencer to be with the in-crowd. That's what these individuals are, most of them. And then you have individuals who, some, not many, who will say it like it is. You know, courage requires you to be at the front line of whatever it is that you are uh, supporting. But it has to be unchanging, in a sense for universal values, such as compassion. That's universal, through and through. It does not change. Love is a universal value. It does not change. It cannot change. But what these individuals are saying, well, let's hold on. It's, it, it's very contextual. No, it's not. Something that the other person does, well, that can be a, a, a instigator for me to go ahead and change my position about giving him love. Now it is justifiable for me to give him violence. That's what this is. But they don't realize that history is there. And even more powerful, the damage that these individuals are causing in influencing people to support violence. What kind of an influencer are you? You're an agent of Mara. Mara is the evil one in, in, in Buddhism. The evil, the deceptive, the wicked. Um, it's not an actual person out there, uh, even though some believe it is. <laughs> but you have the worst of Maras in your heart. And that's called your vanity. That's called your lust, your passion, your hatred, your arrogance. That's called delusion in your heart. That's the most powerful mara you're going to find in the mirror, staring back at you. Ultimately, what you have is just you and your values. And these individuals, apparently, unfortunately, they don't have much values because it is conditional. Love cannot be conditional. My humanity towards you cannot be conditional. My compassion towards you cannot be conditional, meaning depending on how you're treating me. If I'm getting what I want from you, then that's why, you know, toxic relationships are all about that. And when the honeymoon is over, it shows up. When the person gets what they want, this and that, eventually all that 
bells and whistles, they just disappeared. All of a sudden, the truth comes out. The ugliness, is, it was always there. And the same thing here. The cowardice has always been there. But conversely, the courage has always been there as well in those individuals who stand up against violence, who stand up against intolerance, who stand up against ignorance at the risk of it all. That's why it's moving to see individuals in this recent um, uh, events in, in the Middle East. People aren't buying this false flag operation. These are, they see through it because human beings have been seeing enough of it during the last hundred years or so. All of a sudden there's this big something happens and everyone's in a shock and of course you want to do something. And everyone says, in many cases, hesitatingly, but then that ends up sending young kids to war. They lose loved ones, and they cause other people to lose their loved ones. Meanwhile, the rich get richer. So, the battlefield is one of the greatest places. It's a great litmus test of courage. Difficult times, that's, that's another battlefield, as I was saying. Warriors in the past, in legendary, let's say, Greek mythology, like Achilles and others, and other cultures as well, the whole army would follow one person if that person agreed to go to war, basically was guaranteeing that that army would win. Why? Because of the character of the individual, because of the character of that warrior. You can put your trust into that. And the person was saying, you know what, I will go out and, be, and I will, if he's there at the front line, I will go do it. So being an influencer today, although it's not as um, you know, reputable, I guess, <coughs> excuse me, as those leaders were, it's much more superficial, it's, but nevertheless, they have that same opportunity to influence, either to bring out the courage in people or to cause them to become cowardly. And that has a lot, if not everything, to do with how strongly one holds oneself to the virtues that they claim they possess or they're aspiring towards. Because all of that will go up in smoke in a blink of an eye if that warrior at the front line, at the very tip of the army, advancing, if that warrior gets a slash or something that, you know, scrapes his elbow or gets shot with an arrow and says, you know what, I'm it, I'm done, I'm out of here. I don't want to part, be a part of this, and turns around. They, where, where's the leader then? What, what, what was that all about? Where's the warriorness in him? What, what is that? That's what we have a lot of these days. We lack authenticity in these leaders, whatever kind of leader in whatever type of arena. That's what I was mentioning yesterday of the human beings today, the common person is caught between this fake realities. On one end you have the spiritual realm that's, that's or religious teachings that one is provided with where there's love, where there's virtues being advocated. But then you look at your leaders and you look at how they live, these people who are the loudspeakers of such teachings, and you don't see that embodied. So now you have to justify that. You have to normalize what you're seeing, despite the values that they are advising you on, claiming to have something that they don't. Because if you're not carrying those virtues in your character, forget it. Close shop, go home, do something else. Become a bookkeeper, an accountant, change tires, do something else. Flip burgers. Do something else. At least you would be doing it 
with grace because you obviously are not who you think or you say you are. And on the other hand, you have the, the, the people who govern, people who run the show, who, people who are the political or who me, people who make the rules. Saying one thing, talking about justice, liberty, freedom, this and that, and then they go and bomb Africa. And then they go and, and topple governments. Obliterate millions of lives. You see it in, uh, in Iraq, you see it in Afghanistan, you saw it in, in Syria. No, there would not be a single bullet fired in, in Syria, by the way. People were happy. People had food. People had medical coverage. People... People didn't have, you, you didn't have beggars on the streets, by the way. Everybody was fed. Same thing was in Libya. Every, ha every person, every family had a house. Did you know that? There was free education all the way up to university. In fact, if the student didn't want to ta you know, take courses in Libya, the government was happy to pay for that person to go overseas and, and, and attend classes and graduate and come back. They would take care of your, there would not be student loans as such. That's another way of bankrupting your future. That neo-capitalist, cruel, heartless way of enslaving your future generation of, of, of your citizens. It should be free. So these values that they talk about, big words, big titles, big things, big labels, and then you look at their behavior, has nothing to do with humanity, has nothing to do with the principles that they are claiming to be advocates of. So the person is seeing this as well. So now you're caught in lies, surrounded by lies. So this is why I was saying yesterday, in relation to um, cognitive dissonance. So now you start doubting yourself because everybody seems, you think that everybody's following these, but they're not because everybody else like you are confused except for these people at the top because they have stopped being human. They have stopped caring for others. It's very selfish. And the leader of that army cannot be selfish. They have to be selfless. We don't have that. We don't have selfless leaders. In a sense, these influencers also, whether they like it or not, whether they want to or not, they end up being leaders. Now, what kind of leader? That's a different story. So, courage is necessary, which is lacking. Virtue is necessary. Virtue is as essential as oxygen you breathe, the air you breathe, the ground you walk on. Virtue is as essential to life as is gravity. And if those people that you listen to are influenced by on any level, if they don't exhibit these qualities of life, of virtue, of compassion, of kindness, of love, of truth, of freedom, of justice. That's where the justice. Don't look for it in some government building, some capital building, something with, uh, you know, where there's politicians voting on things. Don't look for justice there. Don't look for fairness there. That's the wrong place to look for. Don't look for it in a big, fat, huge, opulent, cathedral or church or mosque or, or temple or synagogue. No, no, no. You won't find it there either. Look for it in the kindness you see when you're walking on the, on the street and you see somebody leaning down and picking up some trash and putting it, it wasn't theirs, and putting it in the bin. Somebody help someone, a stranger, in some way. 
Somebody helps a person who's lost on the street. Somebody who gives another a bottle of water when they see them in the scorching heat outside without a shade, waiting for a bus. Somebody who stops and pulls out their bottle of water and gives it to them. That's an influencer. That's a leader. That's compassion. That's love. That's what we need more of. Not these influencers who are all about themselves and the suits they wear or the how many followers they have, how many book deals they have, how much they charge per appearance around the world. These are not leaders. These are not deserving of the title of a courageous person. These will change their skin faster than a chameleon. Because they don't have integrity. And a courageous person, a leader, does have integrity through and through. So look at the person's behavior. If the person is so changing and they justify it, then it's all conditional their virtue, their integrity, and it can't be conditional, situational. Love is never situational. Truth is never situational. Truth is truth, plain and simple. Dhamma is Dhamma, we say in, in Buddhism. And everything else is everything else. So, What are you? Are you a courageous person? Do you hold your virtues intact? Do you allow the frictions of the tough situations, the battlefield, the scrapes and the and all those clashes? Do they do do they turn out to be like polishing devices to bring out the beauty in you, the integrity and virtues to shine in you? Do they, is that what happens or do you find them completely obliterated? Well, that means you never had it. You were making, making believe that you did have it. So it's not about the words that the person says, it's about their behavior. The conduct says it all. The conduct says it all.